So now we have, uh, we talk about deadlock avoidance. So now we can, we can avoid deadlocks. We can avoid deadlocks if we require processes to declare, to declare the number of instances of each resource that they are going to request. Not to request them, but to just to declare uh, beforehand uh, how many instances of each resource this process is going to request uh, throughout its execution. And with this information, we can avoid that loss. If we know the resource requirements of all, res of all processes, and if we can come up with a linear ordering of the processes, P1, P2, P3, P4. So if we can come up with a linear ordering, not a circular, <coughs> a linear ordering of the processes, such that P1 does not need any of the resources held by the other processes. The, the needs of P1 can be satisfied using the resources that are free, that are available in the system at this point. So P1 does not need to wait for P2, P3, P4. Its needs can be satisfied using what's available in the system. P2, the needs of P2 can be satisfied using what's available in the system plus what will get released by P1. So if what's available in the system plus what P1 releases is sufficient to satisfy the needs of P2, then we are fine. And if the needs of P3 can be satisfied using what's available in the system plus what gets released by P1 plus what gets released by P2, we are fine. And if the needs of P3 can be satisfied using what's available in the system plus what gets released by P1, P2, P3, then we are fine. So this seems to be very abstract. So let's look into a numerical example for the concept of the same state. So this numerical example can will illustrate the, the concept of the safe state or this linear order. I have one resource to simplify things. I only have one resource with 12 instances. And each process, I have three processes, P0, P1, P2. Each process has declared its maximum needs. So process number zero said, I'm going to need 10 instances of this resource. And process one said, I'm going to need four instances and this process number two said I'm going to need nine. And at this point in the present, P0 has five instances of the resource. It has five instances, so this means that given what its maximum need, in the future it's going to need five more. Okay? Process number one currently has two instances, and given the maximum need, it's going to request two more. Process number two currently has two, and given the maximum need, we know that it's going to request seven more in the future. Okay. Now, given these, we can analyze the system, and if we can come up with a linear ordering like this, then we are safe. Now, how many instances of the resource are available at this point? What's available is, we have a total of 12. We subtract what's currently allocated. So what's currently allocated is 5 plus 2 plus 2. So we have 9 allocated to processes, 9 out of 3. So what we have available is 3. We have 3 instances currently available. Now, can we find a linear ordering of the processes such that the needs of each process are satisfied using what's available in the system plus what gets released by the process that comes before that process in the linear order. So the, the first question is, with what is currently available, 
which process can have its future needs satisfied? P1. Yeah, P1. So P1 is the only process that can go ahead now. We know that P1 doesn't have to, doesn't have to wait for P0 and P2. It doesn't need the resources that are held by P0 and P2. So P1 is independent at this point. It can go ahead because its needs can be satisfied using the three instances that are currently available. Okay, so P1 can go first. Then after P1 is done, now we know that it can go and it will eventually release the resources that it has. After P1 is done, how many instances <coughs> will we have of the resource? We'll have five. <coughs> we'll have you know, three plus two, which is five available. So after P1 is done, we will have five instances available. Now with five instances available, <coughs> which other process can go ahead? P0. Yeah, P0. P2 cannot, because P2 needs seven. We currently have five. P0 can. So we put P0. And then after P0 is done, how many instances would we have? So we will have the five plus two. the two that P1 will release. So we will have seven. Now with seven, we can satisfy the needs of P2. Right. So now P2 can go. And when it's done, it's gonna release, you know, we'll have seven plus what it will get released. What, we, what it will release, and it will release, uh, yeah, we'll have seven, and P2 uh, currently has uh, two allocated, so it will release two. Uh, okay, so there is, okay, okay. Uh, I think we made a mistake here. When uh, P0 is done, P0 is gonna release five instances, not two. So it will release what it what it, what is currently allocated to it. So we made a mistake here. When P0 is done, it's gonna release five. And then we'll have 10. And then we'll have 10 plus two, which is 12. When they're all done, you should have all, all 12 instances free. So this means that the system, this is a safe sequence. This is a safe sequence in the sense that we can do P1, P0, P2. So the needs of P1 are satisfied using what's currently available in the system. The needs of P0 are satisfied using what's available plus what P1 will release when it's done. And the needs of P2 will be satisfied using what's available plus what P1 and P0 will release. And this is our safe sequence. <laughs> yeah. Should it be the other way around? Should it be uh, P1 on the right side and P2 on the left side? No, this is the ordering. So, well, so P1 well we can, first? yeah, okay. So it's, it's an ordering of the processes. So P1, so this is, uh, we do P1, then P0, then P2. So this is the order. It goes in this direction. Okay. So it's not about it's not dependencies. dependencies. Yeah, it's not dependencies. It's the ordering of the processes. Thank you. Yeah. If it was ordered P1, P2, P0, would that still be a safe sequence? No, and I think well. here we only have one safe sequence. So you're suggesting P1, P2, and P0? Yeah. Okay. So P1, uh, when P1 is done, it's going to release, uh, we will have five instances. Now at this point, can we do P2? No, okay. we cannot do P2 because it needs seven and we have five. Yeah, so there is, in this case, the safe sequence is unique, but this is not generally true. You will see cases where there are multiple safe sequences. Uh, okay, so this is the, uh, the safe sequence. Now we will show an example of where we cannot have, we cannot find a safe sequence. Now what if P2 requests and gets one more instance? If P2 requests and gets one more instance, so the allocation of P2 will change to three. 
okay? Now P2 has three, and what's available in the system now will decrease by one, so we'll have two. So if we redo this, if we redo this with two available, <coughs> and the, this current allocation, uh, let's see if we can find a safe sequence or not. So now with two only, we can satisfy the needs of P1. So P1 can start, does not need to wait. But when P1 is done, it's gonna release two instances of the resource. So we will have two plus two equals four. Now four will not satisfy the needs of P0 or P2. So we cannot find the safe sequence. We cannot, uh, we cannot put uh, P0 or P2 after P1. So we cannot find, in other words, the needs of P0 cannot be satisfied using what's available in the system plus what is released by P1. And the needs of P2 cannot be satisfied using what's available in the system plus what will get released by P1. So in this case, uh, we cannot find the safe sequence. So we are in an unsafe state. And the, the idea of uh, deadlock avoidance is if you are in an unsafe state, well, avoid, avoid going into an unsafe state. So in other words, here, the system will do the analysis, assuming that if I, the system is going to say, if I satisfy the request of P2, I will get this state, and this is an unsafe state. So if this puts me in an unsafe state, I'm going to play it safe and deny this request. So in this case, we do the analysis, pretending that we have satisfied P2's request. And <coughs> if that leads to a safe state, we will commit that uh, uh, request, uh, we will grant the request and we will commit that. If it leads to an unsafe state, we will, uh, we will not grant the request. We will deny the request. Okay. So, the facts about uh, safe and unsafe states are, uh, if we are in a safe state, then we know necessarily that we will not have a deadlock. If we are in an unsafe state, that does not necessarily mean that we will have a deadlock. It just means that it's, uh, there is a possibility of a deadlock. So the, this uh, approach to deadlock avoidance is conservative. So it avoids putting the system in an unsafe state. Because an unsafe state means the possibility of a deadlock, and we will just avoid the deadlock by avoiding any unsafe state. Okay. But again, an unsafe state does not necessarily mean that, uh, that the deadlock will, will happen in the system. Okay, uh, so we have uh, uh, you know, safe states. If we are safe, then there are no deadlocks. If we are unsafe, then a subset of the unsafe cases is the a deadlock, the deadlock case. Question. Yeah. So why do we initially allocate resources to those processes if there's a chance that deadlock can happen instead of um, holding all the resources and allocating as needed in a sequential manner? So if process one needs the least amount of resources allocated, then we would allocate out of the 12 instead of giving each resource a certain amount and then trying to <coughs> based on what's left. Okay, okay. So here we are doing this. Um, whenever a request, uh, whenever a, a process makes a request for a resource, we analyze the system and if granting that request leads to a safe state, we satisfy this request. 
if it leads to an unsafe state, it, we do not, we, we deny the request. So these allocations, where did these allocations come from? Yeah. These come from requests that these processes made in the past. So in the past, these processes made requests. So P0 made, uh, you know, five requests, say, for instances of the resource. And in all those cases, we analyzed the system and it led to a safe state, so we granted the request. So for each request we analyze, if it leads to a safe state, we grant it. If it leads to an unsafe state, we deny it. 